Damn, I've been unwell. I've had pain in my lower abdomen for the past three weeks now, and mental problems my whole life, but those stay in my secret lockbox. I come to make an announcement, Shadow the Hedgehog's a bitch ass motherfucker, you pissed on my fucking wife, that's right, he took his head off of fucking police. But I've decided to attempt to receive some healthcare. I live in the UK, which means that shit's pretty much free, apart from the dentist, the eye doctor and all the pills I take. Cheers, you Tory scumbags! Government is run by Tory scum, the legally approved term for Conservative Party members, whose job is to conserve obscene amounts of land and wealth in as few hands as possible. Anyway, I didn't have time to sit in a doctor's office, and the pain was kind of getting worse. So I went for the next best thing, the walk-in centre, which for American viewers, it's not exactly a doctor's office, but it's also not exactly a urgent care. It's like a middle ground. You go there, you ask to be seen, they tell you triage is about two hours, and you're like, fine, I've got some time to kill. It's all good. Twelve hours later, you're scrambling to cover your shift. You've not eaten or drank anything in hours because you're scared to leave the building in case your name gets called, only to find out they won't be seeing you. <laughs> okay, slightly angry now. It wasted my time and I'm never getting that back, but it's okay, it's, a, it's all good. If I can't get seen at the walk-in centre, I'll, I'll just ring my doctor. In the morning, I'll just schedule an appointment, so I rang 41 times? No appointment. Wow. Okay. Now I'm getting angrier. We'll try again tomorrow. Don't worry, it's all gonna work out fine. 56. 56 calls, no appointment. Great. Cool. Fantastic. I'm calm. I'm breathing. We're going to try again tomorrow. 61. 61 fucking calls and no appointment. Are you fucking kidding me? The NHS stands for the National Health Service, which is the UK's answer to medical care you receive in the US, where a heart operation leaves you stuck sucking dick to cover the payment plan. Now you have to pay the rest. Thank goodness. How much should I pay? $24 million. Something's in my ass. Main difference is, for the UK system, to a certain extent, it's free. It's a tax-funded system. Roughly last year, it cost each person around about £2,700 in taxes. Again, this fluctuates between different earning brackets and whatnot. The mess it's currently in, however, it should be given a different name, like no healthcare slag. Yes, I know, I am a comedy genius. As you can see, another patient cured and returned to perfect mental health. Yes, she seems very well now, doesn't she? No charge. There is no tiptoeing around the situation, our healthcare system is fucked. And there are so many reasons for this, um, we should probably talk about them. Because you know I have written this all out and done everything from recording to editing for this video, so why not? Let's split up the problems with the NHS into easy digestible sections, much like any diet of the Hollywood stars of today. Small, but full of protein for the next Marvel movie. The NHS has a total of 1.27 million-ish staff on the books in England, which are classed as full-time equivalent, meaning anything from they're working directly for the NHS or they're on the bank, meaning they can choose what shifts they work for what departments via either private hire or the company themselves, whilst working at least 37 and a half hours a week. However, whilst this may seem like a large number, the amount of vacancies Stood at 9.7% according to the House of Lords Library, which translates to around about 133,446 jobs going in England in 2022 for the NHS. With a total of around about, at a rough estimate from the NHS website, 
8,721 NHS locations in England, ranging from hospitals to GP practices to ambulance trusts. That means on average there's at least 15 roles going unfulfilled. What are you talking about? The numbers, basically. What do they mean? Meaning, people already on payroll are having to fill in for these missing people, leading to, obviously, overwork staff. But what is the staffing situation actually like for the NHS? Well, looking at the numbers the NHS itself has provided, we can see that there are around about 130,398 doctors on payroll for NHS England, along with 319,616 nurses and healthcare visitors, as well as 21,231 midwives. Not to mention the 157,098 scientific, therapeutic and technical staff, as well as the 17,870 ambulance staff. So, as you can see, there are many different working parts for the NHS, especially when it comes to staff. Quoting again directly from the NHS, they see on average 1.3 million people a day and they deliver a baby every 54 seconds. So far, they've delivered about four babies in the space of this video and will deliver at least a whole year group's worth by the time we get through this shit. What do you see as the biggest challenges in, in conservation? Yeah, the, the growing human population. Because if where we are, there's nothing else. And do you have views about what should be done about that? Can't you guess? Uh... Buckingham Palace has announced the death of His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. With that many people to see, and that many babies being born, with the amount of staff they have on hand, it's a wonder that shit ever gets done. Now, I imagine you're wondering, why is the NHS on the sun? Why is it on the staff? Come on, man! Why is it on the staff? Come on! Where are the people? Well, according to Sky News, in the UK, a whopping 10,365 staff resigned from the NHS last year due to a work-life balance. Working long hours whilst attempting to care for vulnerable people obviously fucking takes a toll. That does not need to be said. However, working double shifts, filling in for other duties outside of your job role, and being unable to afford to eat at the end of it would pretty much be too much for anyone to take. Because the wages that these people are on are ridiculously low for the job they perform. The CEO of NHS England, Amanda Pritchard, who is in charge of managing the £130 billion budget the Trust receives every year to function, supposedly earns around about £255,000 a year, according to the Daily Mail and the Telegraph. However, those statistics are coming from the Daily Mail and the Telegraph. So take it with a pinch of salt. Slam the door. <coughs> Meanwhile, nurses in England have a starting salary as little as 22,383. Smarmy Amanda here is earning over 10 times what nurses are earning for managing a fucking budget while these nurses are saving lives. To put this into context, I work for a minimum wage. I work at about 10.58. Might be a little bit above minimum wage. Who knows? I don't. I don't want to look that up because I'm scared. I do about 40 to 45 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. I am roughly earning £22,006.40 a year for my job, which is an unskilled labour job, pulling pints and throwing drunk people out at 11.30 at night. I should not be earning the same amount as a nurse who has been through medical school for years to save lives when all I do is break families apart through alcoholism and abandonment issues. Every time you say divorce, you just look so cute. <laughs> now, I'm not saying I should be paid less, but here, please, please don't get it twisted. I need the money for my seven kids and three wives. But what I am saying is that nurses need to get paid more. A lot like CEOs should be getting paid less, you know? It's not rocket science, it's medicine. It's a different fucking field, you jabs. I get it together, Greg. Fucking Greg. Some people think that it being Brexit is the end of the world. It is not. On the contrary, it's a massive opportunity for this country. Boris Johnson, seconds before being fired out of a cannon at the circus. And, and actually, I received, uh, having written that piece, I received overwhelming support, and not just from 
um, Muslim. It's no secret that Brexit was a bad idea. Frankly, the whole situation is not like a really messy divorce. Mum and Dad are arguing about who gets what and that they don't love each other anymore, whilst the child worries it's about to go back to the 80s where car bombings and sending threats to Prime Ministers were cool. By the way, they turned the quote from the IRA to Margaret Thatcher into an inspirational quote on Facebook, and it doesn't get any better than that, baby. We only need to be lucky once. You need to be lucky every time. From IRA, Donnie apparently. Second before accidentally bombing a supermax. What was that? He's just shot the Queen in the back of the head. Brexit had some truly horrific knock on effects. For example, we are now in the complete and sole hands of the lawless space lizards who run this country and they only really care about money. And we really can't get out of that until at least 2024 at the earliest and forever in the darkest timeline. Government is run by Tory scum. For the NHS specific reasons why Brexit's a fucking train wreck of an idea, we look to migrant workers. 19% of the NHS staff are foreign nationals, meaning they're not from the fucking UK. If you don't know where they come from, listen to the Animaniac song about the countries of the world. I'm not a fucking geography teacher. As of June 2023, for every 1,000 workers the NHS has, the national split goes along the lines of this. There are around about 813 British nationals, 86 Asian nationals, 52 EU nationals, 38 African nationals, and 10 other nationals. Roughly the Asian nationality makes up 8.6% of the NHS workforce, or around about 122,000. Whilst EU nationals make up roughly 5.2% of the workforce, or roughly 70,000. Almost half of the countries from the most common nationalities list for NHS staff are EU members, and cutting ties with that big ball of capitalist democracy has begun to sever the ties with connections in the EU leading to a bleeding of EU nationals. And can you honestly fucking blame them? Why stay in a country full of people who actively voted to leave the union of countries you are involved in? According to the Economic Observer, there was a rise of between 15 and 25% in hate crime directly after the Brexit vote, which is both a horrific stat and a good explanation for why non-British nationals are leaving the NHS. Why would you work for a country whose people are actively attacking you and people who look like you for something such as so silly as because you look different to them, like you have a different colour skin or you sound different? No one should be attacked for that shit. It's a silly premise. There's no reason to hate someone for that. It would be the same as oak trees hating birch trees for the sole reason they look different and have different seeds. Don't be racist, I am a building so and I've out. got news oh for you. God, no. They're fucking trees. And people are people. We are all the same. Get over yourself if you are so shallow that you think you have to hate someone just because they are a wee bit different from you. To take a more in-depth look at how Brexit has impacted the NHS, we can look at the EU EFTA anaesthetic specialists. From 2010 to 2021, I know that's a mouthful, but hey ho baby, don't know what else you expected from me. This data is supplied by the Nuffield Trust. Between 2010 and 2011, there was, we had roughly 1,500 EU or EFTA anaesthetic specialists on the books. And that number was slowly but steadily rising until 2015 when Brexit occurred. Then we see a predicted rate and an actual rate. We can see that the number of specialists has fucking stagnated with a rise in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which could be seen as an outlier of sorts. Predicted numbers show around about 2,300 anaesthetic specialists should have been on the books, but in reality, we are sitting just below 2,000 with a trajectory of loss going forward. If this isn't direct proof of the negative impact Brexit has on the NHS, I genuinely don't know what is apart from lockdowns and parties and Johnson being a prick. It is just nature's way of dealing with old people. Now pass me that mic, it's my turn for karaoke. Boris Johnson, during the nationwide lockdown at a 
work meeting. Wink. I've Ed? just seen reports on Twitter that there was a Downing Street Christmas party on Friday night. Do you recognise those reports? <laughs> I went home. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Um, uh, uh, Would the Prime Minister condone uh, having a Christmas? <laughs> What's the answer? I don't know. I didn't want the party. It was cheese and wine. Just be clear, it's not on this. <laughs> Is cheese and wine all right? No. It was a business meeting. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> this is recorded. This fictional party was a business meeting. <laughs> and it was not socially distanced. <laughs> Covid was, ever so slightly, a very shitty time to be alive. The whole thing I do now, this YouTube channel, started because I was brutally depressed in lockdown. Being unable to go outside was fucking awful, and watching the news, seeing the death toll rise every day, and all the fear-mongering done by the media, just had me in a depressive spiral like no other. All I did all day was research statistics and papers relating to Covid, Borderlands 3 was fresh out, so I played that for a bit and drank wine. Something I don't really do anymore because your boy Square is all about that hair. Ain't no fucking joke I'm a fucking I'm a fucking Drink whiskey now instead, it's healthier. However, for those on the front lines, my sorry little struggles are jack shit. Working in an environment where you're staring death straight in the face every day is fucking bad enough, but when that death is a highly infectious disease which you could catch and leave you in the same hospital bed is a new fear in fucking entirely. The brave frontline workers are the ones who got us through the pandemic, not the oily faced fat cats or the slimy no good politicians, it's why we clapped outside like that every week from our homes. For frontline workers, not, not for the men in the high castles. For the NHS, there were many different impacts caused by Covid that we're still seeing now. For starters, let's look at attendance for appointments during the period of April 2019 to March 2021. During this period, you can see COVID has caused a clear decline in attendance for outpatient appointments, something that has definitely cost people their lives. Not to say that's the NHS as well, quite the contrary, the government is the one to blame for this. Let's take a look at the way the government handled the pandemic to demonstrate the effect it had on the NHS and why we have such a backlog right now of all of the different things the NHS does. Looking at this timeline, helpfully supplied by the Institute for Government, we can clearly see that the first month recorded, March, has messages that are already all over the place. And um, the Prime Minister at the time, BJ Big Cock Johnson, claimed that we could fight the virus in 12 weeks. Let's quickly go over to Lockdown Square to find out if that's true. Lockdown Square, can you hear me? This is December 2021. I'm still in lockdown and I'm out of wine. Thank you, past Square. And also thank you, future Square, for inventing time travel and saving us from the evil space zombies that are also vampires. I don't know where this joke's going. We drank the blood of some people, but the people were on drugs. And now I'm a wizard. So as you can see from that clear evidence, we did not fight that shit in 12 weeks. Moving forward to March 23rd, we have confirmation of our first lockdown. And looking at the capacity stats from the NHS website and the Office of National Statistics, we can clearly see that the mishandling is already plain as fucking day. Between August 2020, when a COVID test was introduced, and the end of the year, by which time we'd entered our second lockdown due to mishandling, we had anywhere between 0.05 and 2% of the population testing positive for COVID at any one time. Playing the numbers game, that would translate to almost 1.34 million people testing positive for COVID. Some needing medical care, which we can see in the hospital admission stats, which give us a guideline for how many people have been admitted to hospital due to COVID. By the end of the year, 1.4 million people have been referred to hospital due to COVID, which is already above the average of what the NHS is able to see each day, which is 1.3 million people. I've taught, write, write it down, write it down so you don't forget. So just this alone would cripple an understaffed and underfunded healthcare system. But then we have a complete lack of PPE, which is 
personal protective equipment. For a work site, that would be like a hard hat, a high-vis jacket, and maybe some booties. But for the NHS, it meant face masks, face shields, gloves, protective clothing, sanitizer. And can you guess what happened? Can you, dear viewer? Because I'm, I'm going to tell you, and you're not, not going to like it. The corrupt fuckers that run this country spaffed it up the wall like a teenage boy playing with their cock. It's fucking ridiculous. Four billion worth of PPE was bought by the government, and all of it was useless. You can blame this on so many things, like proper improper financial handling of funds, corrupt officials handing dodgy contracts out to the mates for a slice of the pie. But remember this, we were paying for it. Us! The taxpayer. And none of it was fucking usable! Corrupt motherfucker! <laughs> My name is Steve Dugson, here for coffee. You like energy, right? Good. Well, do some coffee. Get addicted to caffeine. All the cool kids are doing it. All you need to do is drink it, or insert it. I don't care, I just love money. Get your coffee today. If you buy now, your next drink will be full price. Buy it now. Buy coffee. Do it. Now. It's been about two months since I last recorded anything like subscribe and follow for more bitches mental health is an important topic we have discussed this on the channel before see the mental health video if you like or don't i am not your dad but i could be if your name is sheila and you were born in 2003 that's right i have a child or 12 who knows and they don't get any child support off of me it's more than understandable to suffer from mental health problems, especially working in an industry such as the NHS. I too would be anxious all of the time, and to be honest, I already am. But it's clear and indisputable fact that NHS staff are stressed and susceptible to mental health issues due to the job that they take on. We can see this in great detail thanks to the data supplied to us yet again by the NHS. As we can see here, the total days off for staff illness is the highest by a large amount in the category of mental health. And it's not unusual either, we can look back to September 2022 and we can be surprised, so very surprised, that psychological issues are the main reason for staff absence. And can you honestly blame them? Being overworked, underpaid, and dealing with that shit 24-7 would 100% take an effect on your fucking psyche. And it's not like you can go and see a mental health specialist either. According to records supplied by the House of Commons, 17,000 staff or 12% of the mental health professionals left the NHS between 2021 and 2022, worsening the already existing mental health crisis going on in this fucking country. And again, it's completely understandable. When staff cannot even afford to feed themselves, with a study showing nearly 5,000 NHS staff use food banks monthly due to being unable to feed themselves on the wages provided. Now, you may say these problems are superficial. How can this mean staff are depressed? Well. If you had trained for years to look after people and then um, you can't even afford to eat at the end of it, wouldn't you be a bit depressed too? And then you might say, well, they need to manage their money better. Well, it's easier said than done in a cost of living crisis happening in the UK with the papers having to release such grim stories like when the price of things go back down. It's genuinely dystopian. We're all going to die. Finally, you might say that the NHS staff who take time off because of mental health problems shouldn't be in the job. Well, okay then, let's take a hypothetical run at it. We would lose a lot of staff. There would be even more understaffed, which would lead to existing staff taking on more responsibility. That would lead to further burnout, and by further burnout, we would see a further exodus from the industry. Which leads me to this, if you believe this, the NHS staff shouldn't be depressed or shouldn't be in the job if they can't handle it, FUCK OFF! No one asked you. And they're doing their damn best. Now make like a frog and fuck off. Go to France. They'll eat you, you bitch. Yeah. This is a problem we've touched on throughout the video. And I only really have one extra little bit of analysis. Sort your shit out, you Tory cunts! Margaret Thatcher's dead! Ding dong, the wicked bitch is dead.
It's a shame the bitch didn't die 87 years ago! It's a shame that the IRA didn't kill the bitch! Now, there are a multitude of issues to be fixed within the NHS, and there is no exact action plan of steps to be taken, as each problem needs solving just as much as the other. However, for some horrific reason, if I was ever put in charge of the NHS, which is a stupid idea due to a plethora of reasons, like, for starters, I'm not healthy in the slightest, I'm quite the opposite. Secondly, I do way too many illegal narcotics to run a health service, and third, most importantly, that sounds like a lot of work, and I don't want to do that. No thank you. But, in the worst case scenario, here is how I, Shadow Bartholomew Square, would fix the NHS. For starters, on a political front, I give benefits to the doctors and nurses and specialists and anyone who chooses to work for the NHS, like discounts and bonuses that would be given to all staff to help alleviate the cost of living crisis for them. Secondly, free parking to them at all hospitals, now and fucking forever. On a second thought, free parking for everyone. Everyone gets free parking. You get free parking. You get free parking. You get free parking. Everybody gets free parking because you shouldn't have to pay for that shit when you're dying. Thirdly, I'd overhaul the mental health system we're currently working with to be more effective and available to all for free. Doing two things in the process. One, making the service as stable as possible, meaning creating a load of new jobs across the country, acting as mental health advisors, not doctors. Nurses who have been trained specifically to help with mental health issues. This would extend to the NHS in general with the staff of each ward being allocated their own mental health advisor. Someone who can do the same duties for patients as they're going to do for staff. This would give employees of the NHS a safe person to go and talk to, so they're going through management, which is honestly not the best choice for most people. Next, we'd boost that funding. We would aim for at least a 10% increase in funding, allowing the service to provide higher wages for the lowest wage bracket in the company, as well as allowing for the system to be modernised further to allow for quicker patient intake and outtake, leading to a more stable and efficient NHS which would not have to lean on staff working themselves to the bone just to function. <laughs> Finally, I would lower the wage for the top jobs, allowing more money to be given those in lower positions. All in all, my plan has no political backing and no professional experience, and it should be implemented tomorrow. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. So, now you have a rough idea of the problems the NHS faces, how the staff are coping, and or lack thereof, and the inherent corruption destroying the service, thanks to a rotten apple tree in the government. I hope you enjoyed. Next video will be dedicated to the rotten apple tree of government. And stay hydrated. Hello, it's me again. Hi. This is very off script. See, I have coffee. Mmm. Delicious. I thought I'd just top up again at the end, just to say hi. And thank you for standing by whilst we here at Shadow Square Industries work on new things. Honestly, past couple of months, not been great. I've been working double shifts, which is the reason we haven't had a video in a little while, especially a video with this amount of research. Granted, the script was about 10 pages long for this. However, the research took up a lot of my time because it's hard to find certain bits of information. Um, but anyway, thank you again for the fuck. Thank you again for st standing by and waiting for me to come back. It's very kind of you. You, you don't have to do that, man. I'm not blushing a bit like you. Um, there's going to be new videos, hopefully, round about once a month. Don't take that as a promise, because I'm notoriously bad at keeping to a schedule. However, I will aim to release at least seven videos this year. At least. Hopefully. Um, I want to do a couple of thank yous. I want to thank Spicy Puddin on Twitter. Go follow him on Twitter. They do my thumbnails for me, and they're fucking sick. Look at that shit. Look at it. <clears throat> Look at it! Give him money. All of your money. Just forfeit your wallet, motherfucker. Um, thank you to Dogs Dogs for, once again, keeping me grounded and keeping me from going absolutely batshit mental during the whole process of making this video, as well as in life in general, then that thanks, of course, extends to Anon and Bean. You three are my support, fucking, you're my support, you're everything. I couldn't do this shit without you guys. 
in my corner and making sure I'm not about to throw myself into oncoming traffic. And finally, thank you to you, the viewer. It's very kind of you to watch this shit that I pump out. Uh, apologies for the IRA joke. Um, <laughs> that's going to get me into so much trouble at some point, but I am not removing it from this video, no matter what, even if this video gets demonetized. But thank you. Honestly, that's all I have to say. Um, the next video will be on the Conservatives, so if you are not a fan of the Conservatives, stay tuned for that, because I hate the Tories. Um, but thanks. Have a lovely day, have a lovely week, and bye. Forever. Oh, 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 no, I'm just kidding. See you next time.